So here's a polyatomic ion, nitrate ion, NO3 negative. That's a very popular one, isn't it? Well, you can do a loose diagram for that too, because, you know, it is kind of a molecule, it's just that it's got a charge on it. So how do you account for that charge? Quite simply, it's this. NO3, which could be like nitrogen trioxide, but it's not, it's nitrate, says, you know what, when we form, we actually need an extra electron here. And it totally makes sense, because you see that everything's paired up, right? So when you count your total number of valence electrons, it better be an even number, because if you get an odd number, it's kind of kooky. It's not a very stable type of molecule. A few of them are, there are exceptions, like nitrogen monoxide, also called nitric oxide, which would actually have group 5 plus group 6, nitrogen oxygen, would have 11 valence electrons, kind of, kind of odd. This one, you see, here's the deal. Nitrogen's in group 5, oxygen's in group 6 times 3 though, so 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23, and that extra negative says we want one more electron to be able to become stable, a stable ionic type of chemical, right? We're going to gain an electron. Who's going to lose it? Well, um, maybe a metal like lithium will lose that electron to this which wants to gain one, and we get then uh, a coming together of lithium and nitrate to form lithium nitrate, and then that goes through all the ionic bonding and the Born-Haber cycle that we talked about. But the deal is, for this right here, that's got, again, 24 total valence electrons. 23 plus the one here electron for the charge makes 24. The charge tells you how many more electrons you have to add. Hey, so what are we going to do? All right, well, we're going to take nitrogen. We're going to bond three oxygens to it because that actually just kind of sounds right, doesn't it? Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Now, look, that's 2, 4, 6, and we need 24. So here we go. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, we're done. Each of these oxygens has an octet, but nitrogen is saying, I have to have an octet. You got to get, somebody got to give me some electrons. And this nitrogen, I mean, this, this oxygen might say, well, I'll donate. This one says, well, I could donate. Well, this one says, I could, but you only need one of them to do that. So there you go. And now look. 2, 4, 6, 8 around that nitrogen, still 8 around that one, 8, 8, that's it right there. But now we need another way to describe that the whole thing here has an overall charge of negative 1. So what we do is, always for ions, these polyatomic ions, is that we put brackets around the chemical, and then we put the charge outside. That whole thing is a negative 1. Now, this oxygen is saying, I'll donate. What does that mean when you look at this right here? It means these, these couple of concepts, these couple of ideas here. When you draw this, it's implying that this bond here, this one here, is going to actually have more bond energy than these other two. Makes sense, right? Because it's a double bond. It's going to take more energy to break that than these two. And also, by the way, single bonds are the longest bonds there are. Double bonds are actually shorter, and triple bonds are even shorter than that. This molecule is saying right now, I've got different bond energies for one out of the three bonds here, and I've got a short bond and two long bonds that make this up, and you know what? It's not true. That doesn't happen. And so, really, what's really happening is that, well, let's put it this way and break it down simply and say this. But you know, at any one time, this oxygen could have donated its lone pair to complete nitrogen's octet, but this one could have, or this one could have. And so really, what it is, is that you could have drawn the Lewis diagram this way, or, and this is what you could do, you just do this whole thing again, and you put the double bond down here. So you draw this whole thing again, put the double bond down there, and that is called a resonance structure a resonance structure. And so, you know what? And by the way, you're going to say, well, isn't there another one? Yeah, there is. So you actually have to draw three of these structures and then put that double bond not only here, but here as well. That's called resonance. And what that's trying to do is say that at any one time, that molecule could look like any one of these because actually, all the bonds here are the same length, and they're all the same energy. But the cool thing is, and this is true, when you measure a nitrogen to oxygen single bond and a nitrogen to oxygen double bond, totally legit, but not in this molecule, 
This one is longer than this one. That makes sense. But one that has resonance in it, where the double bond might be here, but actually might not be here, they're actually like, well, what are they at any one time then? They're like one and a half bonds. And a resonance bond here between a nitrogen and oxygen is in between, not necessarily right in the middle, but in between the single bond and the double bond. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a one and a half bond. That is neat. And that's what a resonance structure is all about. You just say, hey, that double bond is flipped between all of these at any one time. Does that really occur? Actually, not really. Uh, but this term was derived at, so we could actually figure it out from the German Zwischenstufe. So this is actually, resonance is called Zwischenstufe. So resonance is spelled resonance, and Zwischenstufe is spelled resonance. So that's what you just got to remember. Okay, so resonance structures, when you have equivalent single bonds here with a double bond here, and which one to actually make the double bond, I can't decide. Well, then you flip between all of them, and that's what you do.